Hey guys, Tony Benson here with Wealth Builders HQ and creator of Patterns in a Flash. We're going to do a quick review of the two patterns that we had last week for the pattern of the week. But before we get there, let's get to the disclaimer out of the way. I am not a registered broker or investment advisor. I will not give you any recommendations or advice. Everything we do here is purely for educational purposes. If I do mention a trade, just assume it is a paper trade or a practice trade. For regulatory reasons, we do not discuss funded trading here. So we looked at a head and shoulders on IRT and descending triangle on Texas Instrument. Let's see how they've played out so far, if they have played out so far, because they don't always, right? Patterns are like everything, right? Some are, some are good, some are bad. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Some trades work out good, and some trades work out spectacular, and other trades work out terribly. So uh, <laughs> turns out I was just a couple weeks ahead on oil. A few weeks ago, I got into heavy on some downside on oil, and it went up and stopped me out, and I took a, a decent little beating, and then... Uh, this last week and a half, they've just tanked. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't catch the last one. I was too busy trading other stuff. So uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Win some, you lose some. You get in some and kill it sometimes. And other times, it's not so great. But IRT is one of these we looked at. Uh, head and shoulders, not the prettiest thing, but it is definitely playing out right now. Uh, I'm not sure where this is at today. If you can see behind me, my screen is on. And I just pulled the trigger on a day trade here about five or ten minutes ago. So if I turn around and look, bear with me. It's going well, so I'm going to forget about it until we're done here. This won't take about a few minutes just to review these. So um, we got a big potential on this, actually. This is one thing I love about it. It's a $6 potential on a $22 stock. is massive, right? Percentage-wise, that's, what, 30%, 25%, 30%, uh, which is huge. If you trade options and you understand, generically speaking, with options, if, if you're not familiar with options, generally speaking, for every 1% the stock moves, you get about a 10% move in the option. Okay, so if you get a hundred or a ten percent move in the stock, you're going to get about a hundred percent move in your option, and there's a lot of variances on which option you buy or not. So sometimes it's bigger, sometimes it's smaller, depending on which option you buy. So it's that's just kind of a general rule of thumb. You typically get about ten percent move in the option for each one percent of the stock. So if the stock was to move twenty or thirty percent, you're looking at two to three three hundred percent on the option. So that's why I love, especially when there's a big potential. Now, this is a head and shoulders, and you can see it took six or eight months to, to form the pattern. Sometimes it can take that long to play out as well. Uh, now, you can see we dropped from 28 to 22, which is six points, which is about 20%. It did it in about a week and a half when we formed the head. So there's a possibility that it does it again, and it does it very quickly. It may not take six or eight months to play out. And in fact, most of the time when stocks fall, they far, sig fall significantly faster than they go up. Some people like to say they fall three times faster. I don't know if that's been proven or true or not, but there's no doubt that typically they fall faster, right? And it makes sense. If you're climbing a rock wall, how long does it take you to get up, right? If you let go and you fall, you're going down a lot faster than you went up, right? <laughs> so it's just the law of gravity. This is the nature. Uh, so this is still kind of, now it's in that kind of iffy spot right now. So keep an eye on it. Uh, the market's pretty oversold and I wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce or at least go sideways for a little while. So I'll be keeping an eye on this. It's a little bit outside of the uh, the entry point. I don't know what it's doing right now, but uh, this is just an ended, ended chart, an end of day chart from yesterday. So if we get back up in that range, what I'd prefer to see is when it breaks the neckline, I see it, like to see it come back up to it and do a roll reversal. So I'd like to see it come back up to this anywhere in 2169, 2101. If it bounces back up into this range in the next week or two, I'll be definitely looking to see what the action looks like. And then if there's any bearish signals, I will load up on some puts. So that's me. Uh, Texas Instrument, same thing. This is another one that has some big potential. Um, and it's already dropping. And it's dropped a bunch. This is the part that I am uh, I get a little concerned. Not concerned with, but um, stocks don't typically just crash and fall off a cliff, right? They usually bounce on the way down, right? It's more like a, a steep hill, not necessarily a cliff. Uh, sometimes they do. And so far this has, but there's the thing. It dropped from 177 to 150 in a matter of, what, a week and a half, two weeks? 531? Yeah, we're looking two, two and a half weeks. It's dropped a bunch. Um, so the odds are this thing's going to bounce somewhat to a certain degree. And this is just like the last one. Big potential if it bounces back up in here, anywhere in this range between 155, 160, I'll be looking for some kind of signal that says we're getting weak, the bullishness is not there, and if it can't hold and it starts to turn over, then I would look at uh, loading up with some puts. Uh, one of the leftover stragglers, Abbott, again, this is a lot like these other two, right? We've got a big longer-term head and shoulders. If we look at a weekly, you can see, um, and it's broken, broken the neckline in a big way. And another one, same thing. I mean, the, the downdraft for the last week, week and a half has been significant. So I would look for a, uh, some type of at least sideways action for a little bit or a retracement back to the upside. And if we retrace back up, same as the other ones, if we get back anywhere from about 106 up to about 110, somewhere in that range, 
and then stall out. And we start to give signs, kind of like it did here, right? This is what I'm looking for. See, we had a, a pretty decent sized drop here. Bullish engulfing pattern, rallies up here, stalls out for about a week. We got a bearish engulfing pattern, and then it tries to break again here. It can't, and then we get a Harami pattern, and we get another bearish engulfing pattern, and from there it dropped. So looking for something like this to possibly happen next, or at the very least, a sideways type of movement like this. You can see here, here's a big drop, right? And then it went sideways for two or three weeks. Actually, it went sideways for two or three months here before it made another big move. Um, but that's essentially what I'd be looking for after this big drop, either, either a small bounce or a sideways move. And uh, look for some kind of signal that says we're probably going to another leg to the downside. So that is it. Now I can get back to my trade trade. And uh, y'all have a wonderful day. And just remember, if you're going to fail at one thing, fail at quitting. God bless. Bye-bye. Folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the training. Now, if you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and go ahead and hit the subscribe button right over here and hit the bell to keep up with all the latest trading content. And oh, did you know that we have a podcast? Supercharge your trading education with the Stock Market Millionaire, which you can find in the description down below. And while you're there, you can also find other amazing free trading resources that I've put together just for you.